Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to address this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to the debate on the 2019 budget statement. Mr. Speaker, unemployment has been a significant problem facing this country within the past decade. And this problem has escalated to the point that we had an association of unemployed graduates being formed. We had a situation where our nurses were crying for employment, our teachers were crying for employment, the skilled were crying for employment, and the unskilled were also crying for employment. Mr. Speaker, it was in the face of this that, that the visionary Nana Adodankwa Ekufwadi, then the presidential candidate for the MPP party, um, developed a masterpiece manifesto, yes. which we labeled change, an yes. agenda for jobs. Yes. 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 Mr. Speaker, it is worth noting that all the policies within that manifesto, the underpinning policy is employment. Mention one district, one factory. Um, mention planting for food and jobs. Yes. Mention NAPCO. Mention NAPCO. Yes. Uh, mention yes. one district, one dam. Yes. Um, yes. Mention yes. afforestation. Yes. Mention the diversification of our mineral resource base. Yes. Yes. Mention. Mention um, planting for export and rural development. All these policies are geared towards providing employment. Mr. Speaker, just to pick on a few, I would like to touch on the diversification of our mineral resource base and especially to speak to the bauxite industry. Mr. Speaker, it has been the vision of many governments to this date to to explore our mineral resources and to develop an integrated aluminium industry. Mr. Speaker, um, during President Kufo's era, he spent a whopping $18 million to acquire Val Valco. The next step for us was to ensure that we had a refinery within the country so that we can have an integrated industry. Mr. Speaker, it is worth noting that it is during the first two years of the, the government of His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Ekufwadu yeah. that we have presented to this, to, to this Honorable House a Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation Bill, which has been passed. And this is going to manage. Well, member, hold on. Yeah, the Honorable Bodo. <laughs> Why? Why? Why they are? Why? Three of them. Why? Sit down. Bauer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to draw the honorable member's attention. She lives opposite me uh, in Jobson Center. She is referring to one district, one dam. But what we know as a policy of the government is one village, one dam in the northern region. I remember, correct yourself and proceed. Yes. Announcing intervention. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation is going to ensure effective management of our bauxite resources to ensure that the country has an integrated an integrated aluminium value chain which will create over 100,000 jobs directly and indirectly yeah. mr speaker the government of his excellency nana dodankwa ekufwadu is not interested in handing over 50% of our bauxite resources to one person is rather interested in setting up the umbrella institution that will ensure effective management of our resources yeah. so that the whole country will benefit from our bauxite resources. Mr. Speaker, this is the government that we voted for, and this is the government that is putting Ghanaians back to work. Mr. Speaker, I'll also like to touch on um, Maslock, the Microfinance and Small Loan Center. 
Mr. Speaker, we know that the government of His Excellency Nana Adodanko Ekufuado is noted for social interventions. This social intervention was one that was established by His Excellency President Kufuor, and it made great impacts in our economy, especially for our women who had difficulty in assessing funds for their businesses. Through this facility, we are able to assess funds to grow their businesses. Mr. Speaker, within the past um, 10 years, this facility has been so mismanaged oh, that, oh, 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 oh. that a loan recovery, a loan recovery analysis done by the centre as of 2016 indicates that the special project financing extended about 87.7 million, but the recovery rate to date is approximately 30.6 percent. Wow. Mr. Speaker, it is for this reason that we have been unable to disburse much funds to those who really need this facility for their business in order to impact significantly on the economy. But we want to assure the teeming um, informal sector workers that the government is dedicated to recovering these funds and is also dedicated to adding more funds to the centre in order to facilitate their activities. In addition to double salary. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I will also encourage the centre in the disbursement of this facility to ensure, as the President has indicated, that a significant proportion of the facility go to our women folk. And not, and not to our members of parliament. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this will, create, this will indeed create many more indirect jobs and will benefit households. It will, the, benefits of, the benefits of the whole society by financially empowering women in the local income sphere is widely acknowledged and is also in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Mr. Speaker, I would like to also turn to the textile industry. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, the textile industry, which was a major employer, has virtually collapsed. If I may read from paragraph 595. From paragraph 595, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The unfair trade practices in the textile sector has literally collapsed local manufacturing companies, leading to a significant reduction in the number of employees in the sector from a record high of 30,000 in the early 90s to a current level of less than 5,000. Mr. Speaker, faced with the challenges of the sector, what has been done within the past 10 years to address this? During the period of um, ex-president Kufuor, he introduced the presidential special initiative on garments and textiles. We had a garments enclave which um, supported companies to set up to export to um, departmental stores um, outside and we were gaining foreign exchange. Yeah. What has happened to these companies? All the support to that sector has dwindled. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the current administration is dedicated to revamping this sector to ensure that it takes back its pride of place to provide the employment that our masses need. It is for this reason that His Excellency, His Excellency Mr. President decided to support Akosombo Textiles Limited in order for it not to collapse. Mr. Speaker, one of, the, one of such companies which collapsed, which was actually doing well exporting to international um, departmental stores, was Premier Quality Limited. We have to support the sector to take back its pride of place. Mr. Speaker, within the past two years of this administration, a lot has been done to deal with the situation to ensure that the sector takes its rightful place. And I, if I may read from paragraph 597, from paragraph 597, some of the actions that have been taken by the Ministry of Trade is the introduction of tax stamps for locally manufactured as well as imported textiles, the introduction of a single dedicated entry corridor for imported textile products, the implementation of a textile import management system to coordinate all imports of textiles, including the vetting of designs and logos, and also providing support and incentives to local manufacturers to improve their competitiveness. 
we all realize what this um, sector can contribute to the economy. And we need to support it to do this because it can provide a lot of employment. And as um, the Honorable Minister for Tourism indicated, if we can do this, we can support the projects that they are spearheading. Wear Ghana, that we all support our local manufacturers by always wearing Ghana, our local textiles. And through this, we can support an, a garment industry to undertake exports to the international markets to generate the foreign exchange that we so badly need. Mr. Speaker, we have um, one minute. Mr. Speaker, just to briefly touch on planting for exports and rural development. Mr. Speaker, this is also a very important um, policy by the government of Ghana, which is being spearheaded by um, the Ghana Export and Promotion Center. We all know that we need the foreign exchange, and our rural people are basically uh, mainly engaged in agriculture. If we can support them with these seedlings to undertake planting of um, um, palm, and pineapples, and coconut, cashew, and palm. All these products are export products. And therefore, I want to commend um, His Excellency Nana Dodankwe Kufadu for the planting for exports and rural development because it is a two pronged activity which will generate foreign exchange as well as provide employment for our teaming youth and our rural folk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a budget that is yes, worth supporting. Indeed, Let sir. us both sides Your support the budget. Up and ensure its implementation to a successful end and